Hi everyone! I hope you're having a good day. So, before we start, I would just like to remind you na um, since malapit nang matapos ang ating semester, please submit your assessment task, okay? So, today we will be discussing our lab activity number 8, which is entitled Nutrient Sources, Concentrates, Roughage, and Supplements. Okay? So first, what is nutrition? Nutrition is the process of providing or obtaining food necessary for our health, growth, and maintenance. So why is nutrition important? Because nutrition affects the profitability of livestock and also the single most costly part of animal production. And through proper nutrition, we can ensure the efficiency of livestock. Okay? Because kapag nabigay natin sa animal yung kanilang proper nutrition, magiging effective din siya and efficient producer. Okay? So, mapuproduce din niya yung animal product efficiently and productively. Next is nutrients or um, substance in either mineral or compound form that are absorbed from the digestive tract into the blood that function as that main function is for the metabolism of the body. So, meron tayong six basic nutrients. These are water, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and of course, minerals. So, first um, on the list is the water. Water is the nutrient that when lacking causes the death fastest. Why? Because according to studies, we can live without food for 8 to 21 days as long as meron tayong source ng water. Pero kapag ang body natin walang water, we will be dying for about 3 days lang. Okay? Water helps to maintain the body's um, temperature and it also transports nutrients to the cells. Water also assists in removing waste products from the body. Next is the carbohydrates, are organic compounds that is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and of course, oxygen. They supply the body with energy and heat. Excess carbohydrates are stored as fat, and carbohydrates are the main energy source for the brain. Without carbohydrates, the body could not function properly. Next is fats, also known as lipids provides the body with energy and it helps it carry out the range of function. Okay? Fats gives more gives 2.25 times more energy than carbohydrates. Okay? So yung fats and carbohydrates pareha sila source ng energy. Next is protein is a macronutrient that every cell in the body needs to function properly. It is also an organic compound that is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and of course, nitrogen. Next is vitamins are micronutrients that offer a range of health benefits. So, meron tayong two types ng vitamins. These are the fat-soluble and the water-soluble vitamins. Okay? So, ang example ng fat-soluble vitamins ay vitamin A, D, E or K and K, while water-soluble vitamins naman are composed of B vitamins and vitamin C. Okay? Fat-soluble vitamins are simil similar to oil and do not dissolve in water, while um, water-soluble vitamins, of course, they dissolve in water. That's why they are called water-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins are most abundant in high-fat foods and are much better absorbed in our body, in our bloodstream, when we eat them with fat. Okay? Next, for the minerals. Minerals are inorganic compounds that serves as a structural component of our organs and tree tissues and also as a cell regulators. So, we have two types of minerals, the micro-minerals and the macro-minerals. Parehas lang silang important sa body, pero kapag sinabi nating macro, Kailangan sila sa body with high, in high amount kapag sinabi namang micro-minerals in uh, small amounts. Kaya nga yung micro, tinatawag din trace minerals. minerals Kasi kailangan lang sila sa body in small amount. Pero same lang yung importance nila. 
Okay, so for the animal feed or feed ration, it is divided into two types, the concentrate and the roughage. Okay, roughage is composed of carbonaceous roughage and proteine proteinaceous roughage. Kapag kasi sinabi naman natin concentrate, meron din tayong carbonaceous concentrate and proteinaceous concentrate. Of course, concentrate din, andun yung mineral supplement, vitamin supplements, and feed additives. Animal feed needs to meet the requirement of the animal. Okay? So, kailangan maibigay natin yung requirement ng animal, yung pangangailangan niyang pagkain. Of course, para, para rin maging mataas at maging maganda yung production niya. Okay? Feeds are classified according to their physical characteristic and nutritional properties. Kapag kasi sinabi natin concentrate, ito yung merong more than 60% TDN or total digestible nutrient but meron siyang 20% fiber. Kapag kasi sinabi naman natin roughage, ito yung merong less than 60% TDN pero more than 20% ang fiber. Okay? So, itong mga roughage, ito yung mga grasses and legumes natin. Kaya nga, more than 20% ang fiber content niya. Ma-fiber siya. Okay? So, sa concentrate, we have five types of uh, um, five types of concentrate. Okay? So, meron tayong carbonaceous. Itong carbonaceous concentrate natin, ito yung source ng energy ng animal. Kapag kasi sinabi naman nating proteinaceous concentrate, ito naman yung protein source. Okay? Why? Because yung animal, para rin tayo yan. Kapag gumain tayo, merong kanin at merong ulam. Kapag kasi sinabi nating kanin, ito yung carbonaceous concentrate. Ito yung energy source niya. Kapag kasi sinabi naman nating proteinaceous concentrate, kaya nga siya tinawag ng proteinaceous, ito yung protein source na sa atin naman, ito yung ulam. Okay? ba diba? Usually, kapag kumakain tayo, adobo and um, rice. Okay? So, mineral supplement naman, of course, um, ito yung source niya ng mineral, vitamins, and vitamin supplement, and of course, the feed additives. Okay? So, um, in carbonation concentrate, meron tayong five types. Okay? Five types of concentrate um, cereal grains. Okay? The first one is the corn. Okay? Corn is known as the king of cereals. Okay? Bakit siya tinawag na king of cereals? Because of its high energy content of almost 80% total digestible nutrients. Next naman is wheat. It is a important feed, important imported feed ingredient but excellent for duck feeds. Okay? Pero mostly ginagamit nga natin sa feed ng animals ay corn. Bakit? Kasi it is locally available and of course because of its high energy content. Next is barley. Um most supply of barley in our country is imported. And meron ding mga locally produced but mostly intended for beer production or beer manufacturing. Next is sorghum. Only small amount is locally produced and inclusion in the diet of non-ruminants is limited because of its anti-nutritional factor. Okay, so ang anti-nutritional factor na content ng sorghum ay yung tinatawag nating tanin. Okay. Next is rice. Rice is locally produced but mostly for human consumption. It, it has um, high energy content and rich in vitamin B complex. Okay? So, for the grain milling byproduct, pag sinabi natin grain milling byproduct, these are derived from the processing of grains, usually for human consumption. The first one is the rice bran. Okay? Rice bran is the byproduct of milling, rice milling. This is also known as the darak. Okay, so kapag nag-mill ng rice, so yung rice yung para sa human consumption. And ito namang darak, ito yung para sa animals. Okay? Next one are the rice middling or tinatawag din nating bean lid. Ito yung mga nadurog na part ng rice. Um, only small quantities are available, available for animal feedings and Pigments are needed when used in broiler and layer diets. Why? 
Kasi yung rice middlings, kung mapapansin nyo siya ay maputi, di ba? White siya because galing nga siya sa rice. So, yung kulay kasi, nung, um, yung pigment, di ba? Doon sa yolk, nakikita nyo yung pigment doon sa yolk, kaya siya madilaw. is because of the corn. Okay? Doon sa diet nung manok, doon sa pagkain ng manok. So, kapag ka mas maraming corn, yung pina, mas maraming corn yung portion na pinakain mo sa layer, mas yellow yung yolk niya. Pero kung mas konting corn at mas maraming darak or mas maraming midlings kang pinakain sa kanila, nagiging pale or ma, nagiging maputla yung kulay ng yolk. Okay? Next is wheat brand. Locally supply comes from comes largely from milling of human grade wheat, of course para sa pag, paggawa ng bread. And of course, corn bran. High level of inclusion affect the palatability and feed density. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya maganda sa paglasa ng mga animals. Kaya naapektuhan yung palatability. Okay? Next source naman ng carbonaceous concentrate or ng energy are the root crops. Okay? Root crops are group of plants with tubers on the underground step. Okay? It is um, used in poultry and swine diet as a partial substitute for corn. But these are mostly dust, dusty when dry and sticky when wet. Okay? Remember that is, this is only used as partial substitute to corn. Hindi mo pwedeng palitan na tatanggalin mo yung corn at papakain mo na lang ay itong cassava. First example is the cassava. Next is the sweet potato. Okay? So, for the liquid and semi-liquid energy sources, okay, these are um, high in energy and mostly used for special purposes only. Okay, the first one is the coconut oil. It is used to increase the caloric density of the diet but should not exceed in 6% of the ratio. Okay. Next is palm oil, ganun din, pinapataas niya yung caloric density pero hindi pwedeng sumobra ng 6% ng diet yung papakain mo sa kanya. Okay? Next are the molasses, it is used to enhance the palatability of the diet. Ibig sabihin, kapag hindi masyadong, um, hindi masyadong palatable or hindi masyadong maganda sa panlasa ng animal, yung pinapakain mo sa kanya for example, kapag ka sa buffalo kapag ang papakain mo sa kanya ay rice straw, usually parang matamlay sila dahil hindi nila masyadong gusto yung pagkain nilalagyan ng molasses okay? itong molasses kasi ay matamis siya because um, byproduct siya galing siya sa crush um, sugar cane byproduct siya ng paggawa ng sugar okay but um Kapag ka-excessive naman yung pinakain mong molasses doon sa animal, it has a laxative effect. Ibig sabihin, medyo magtatai siya because of the high potassium content of the molasses. Next is the lactose. Ang kapag ka sinabi nating lactose, ito yung sugar content ng milk. Okay? It is excellent source of energy for piglets. Mostly, ginagamit siya sa piglets or ginagamit din siya milk substitute. Okay, doon sa mga bagong awat na biik. Okay. Next, for the proteinaceous concentrate, inulit ko, pagka sinabi nating proteinaceous concentrate, ito yung source ng protein, ng proteina. Ito yung pinakaulam ng animal. Okay. The first one is the SBM or soybean or soybean meal is the most commonly used protein and amino acid source because of its cheap price. Okay. So, kung ang mostly used natin kanina para sa energy source ay corn, dito naman sa proteinaceous concentrate ay mostly used natin ay soybean. Okay. Nor Next is the corn gluten meal is a good source of protein for ruminants because it contains up to 40 to 60% CP. Pag sinabi natin CP, ito yung measurement natin ng protein. Tinatawag din na crude protein. Kaya siya naging CP. Next is the copra meal. It is the dried and extract, extracted from ground coconut meat. Galing siya sa coconut. Okay. Next is pork meal or porcin meal is obtained from various carcass of swine. Okay. Ito yung mga reta-retasong karne ng um, baboy na ibinilad, drinay at giniling. 
Next is for the poultry byproduct meal. Kaya nga siya tinawag poultry byproduct. Ito yung mga carcass ng ng poultry na dapat itatapon na. Ito yung ulo, paa, and laman loob. Di na dry din siya and ginikling. Next is the blood meal. Mataas ang CP content niya kaya usually ina-add din siya sa diet. Pero nakakababa siya ng mababa ang digestibility. Ibig sabihin hindi na da-digest ng animal and hindi rin siya palatabon. Next is fish meal. It is an excellent source of B vitamins and quality protein. Next is skim milk powder. Kapag sinabi nating skim milk, ibig sabihin wala ng fat content yung milk. Kaya nga skim milk or non-fat milk. Okay? Resulting from the removal of water and fats. It is also used as milk replacer. Next is of course feather meal. Ito naman yung mga balahibo na binilad at giniling. It contains 85% CP. Okay. So for the mineral supplement, meron tayong macro minerals and meron tayong micro minerals. Okay. So unahin natin sa macro minerals. Meron tayong calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sulfur, sodium, potassium and chlorine. Okay? So calcium, it is needed for strong bones and um, kailangan din siya para sa pagkaklat ng blood or blood clotting, of course. Phosphorus, it is used in all cell function and magnesium helps to maintain normal nerve and muscle function and of course, nakakatulong din siya sa pagbibigay ng healthy immune system. Next is sulfur. It is um, it helps with the digestion and waste elimination if, and of course bile secretion. Next is sodium. It maintains water balance. Potassium regulates the muscle contraction and regulates heartbeat. Okay. Kaya nga kapag uh, meron tayong muscle cramps, okay? Ibig sabihin, pag ma may muscle cramps tayo, kinukulang ng potassium yung ating muscle, kaya nga hindi siya nagko-contract. Okay? Next is chlorine. It acts as an electrolyte that aids digestion and regulates blood pH. Okay? For the microminerals naman, or also known as trace minerals, inuulit ko, pag sinabi nating macro-minerals, kailangan siya ng body ng animals at ng body ng humans sa ma mataas or sa mas maraming amount. While kapag sinabi naman nating micro, kailangan siya ng katawan sa mas konting amount. Okay? Ang mga micro minerals natin ay manganese, iron, copper, zinc, selenium, cobalt, molybdenum, and of course, iodine. Okay? Manganese for the regulation of enzyme. Iron is essential for red blood production. Zinc supports immune system and aids in healing of wounds. Selenium acts as an antioxidant. Cobalt is involved in the production of red blood cells also. Molybdenum acts as an enzyme regulator. And iodine helps to regulate the growth, development, and the metabolism of the body. Okay. Okay, for the vitamin supplement, meron tayong water-soluble and meron tayong fat-soluble vitamins. Okay? So, kung makikita ninyo dyan, naka-indicate yung kung anong vitamin and kung ano yung other name ng vitamin na yan. Okay? So, meron tayong B1, known as thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B3, niacin, B5, pantotenic acid, B6, pyro pyridoxine, B7, biotin, B9, folic acid, B12, cobalamin, and vitamin C, also known as the ascorbic acid. For the fat-soluble vitamins naman, or the adic vitamins, we have retinol, colicalciferol, tocoperol, and of course, a pythonodiane. Okay. For the function of these vitamins, Vitamin B1 is needed for energy metabolism. Vitamin, um, vitamin B2 for the... Um, it is important for normal vision and skin health. 
Vitamin B3 or niacin is important for nervous system, digestive system, and the skin health. Vitamin B5 or pantotenic acid is a part of an enzyme needed for energy metabolism. Vitamin B6 is a part of an enzyme also but is needed for protein metabolism and helps make red blood cell. Vitamin B7 is also a part of an enzyme and needed for energy metabolism. Vitamin B9 is a part of an enzyme that is needed for making DNA and new cells. Vitamin B12 is a part of an enzyme making, making for making new cells and important for nerve function. Vitamin C act as an antioxidant and needed for protein metabolism and important for immune system health and aids iron absorption. Okay, For the fat-soluble vitamin, vitamin A is needed for vision and healthy skin. Vitamin D is needed for proper absorption absorption of calcium. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and protects cell walls and vitamin K is needed for proper blood clotting. Okay, so for the feed additives, meron tayong antibiotics, hormones, pre probiotics, prebiotics, and of course, enzymes. Okay? Kapag kasi sinabi nating antibiotics, ito yung syempre ginagamit natin to treat and prevent bacterial infection. Kapag kasi sinabi naman nating hormones, these are um, they control a number of function including metabolism, reproduction, growth, mood and sexual health. Kapag kasi sinabi naman nating probiotics, ito yung mga good bacteria that is needed to maintain a healthy balance. While kapag kasi sinabi naman nating prebiotics, they act as fertilizer that stimulate the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut. So basically, kapag sinabi nating probiotics, ito yung good bacteria sa ating um, digestive system. Pag sinabi naman nating prebiotics, ito yung pagkain nitong mga probiotics. Kaya nga siya tinatawag na they act, kaya nga sinabing they act as fertilizer. Okay? So yung prebiotics, ito yung nagsiserve as feed for the probiotics or the good bacteria. And lastly, enzymes are proteins that helps speed up chemical reaction in our bodies. Okay, so for the roughage, okay, inuulit ko, ang roughage ay merong less than 60% TDN but more than 20% fiber. So meron tayong dalawang types ng roughage. Ito yung carbonaceous roughage and proteinaceous proteinaceous roughage. Okay? Kapag kasi sinabi nating carbonaceous roughage, inulit ko, it act as energy source. Kapag ka proteinaceous roughage naman, it act as protein source. Okay? So what is the difference? Kapag kasi na, yung kanina, yung diniscuss natin na concentrate, they are mainly used for non-ruminants like pigs um, and chickens. Kapag kasi sinabi naman nating roughage, ito yung grasses and they are mainly used in feeding ruminants. Okay? So, meron tayong carbonaceous and proteinaceous. So, inuulit ko, kapag sinabi natin carbonaceous, ito yung nagsiserve ng as kanin na nagiging energy source. Pag proteinaceous naman, ito yung nagsiserve as ulam na nagiging source ng protein. So, kapag ka carbonaceous roughage, these are mainly grasses. Okay? Kapag ka proteinaceous roughage naman, these are mainly legumes, leguminous plants. Kap anong pinagkaiba nila? Okay, so i-discuss natin further. Okay. So for the carbonaceous roughage, these are the grasses. The first example is the napier grass. And the scientific name of napier grass is Penicetum purpureum. So as you can see, yan yung example sa picture. Okay? Kaya natin siya dinistinguish as grasses kasi yung kanyang leaves ay pahaba. Okay. Next naman ay guinea grass or panicum maximum. Next is par grass or bracaria mutica and pangola grass or dignitaria decumbens. Okay. And of course, uh, last is the alabang X or the decantium aristatum. Okay. So ito naman yung ating 
proteinaceous roughage. Ito yung mga legumes. Okay? Mapapansin nyo yung pinagkaiba. Yung dahon nito ay pahaba. Ito naman ay round, rounded or oval shape. Okay? The first one is the pintoy peanut or arakis pintoy. Itong arakis pintoy ay usually ginagamit sa mga landscape and ginagamit siyang cover crop. Okay? Pang, crop, pang cover siya nung um, ground. Okay? Next is the centrosima or centrosima pubescens and stylo or stylosantes guanensis. Next is the kakawate or also known as madre de cacao. Glyrici, the scientific, scientific name is the glyricidia sepium. Next is the ipil-ipil or the leucana leucosipala. And that's it for our lab activity number 8. Okay, so please feel free to message me if you have any other question okay 